On a beautiful day like this one, when students and professors bask in the glow of their education, it's hard to believe that someone, somewhere, would be trying to harm them. But right now, we at the Security Operations Center and other university IT professionals can see the signs of cyber criminals trying to steal money and information from anyone who might accidentally let them. Now, when we talk about cyber criminals, let's be frank. These are not basement hackers. These are genuine IT experts with a double major in deception. No matter who you are, if you use the internet, you will be a target. So for the next few minutes, we'd like to invite you on a journey through the darkest online threats our university faces, and how to beat them. Because while our attackers are dangerous, they're not invincible. And as you've heard before, if you are prepared, you will not fear. The longer you drive on the same roads, the less you have to think about navigation. Your route becomes instinctive. In a way, people do the same thing online. We often navigate without thinking, because we know how the internet works. We trust that if a button looks the same way it did yesterday, it will take us to the same place. But internet pathways aren't quite like roads. If an attacker wanted to, they could make what looks like a real email or website, but send you clicking miles off course, so to speak. And when they've got you in their own territory, anything you type in becomes theirs. When an attacker pretends to be a trustworthy entity via email to trick the receiver into giving up private information, we call it phishing. Phishing scams reel in millions of victims every year across all demographics. For example, let's say you're an adjunct professor. One day you get an email from the IT department, a little rare but not unheard of. It says there's a problem with your university account and that you should click on a link and change your password. Strange, but reasonable enough, right? So you click, enter your old password and a new one, and hit submit. Well, guess who now has access to everything your university account has to offer? Whenever you receive a message that seems even slightly strange, ask yourself, could this be a phishing attack? Normal phishing attacks are rather generic sounding, because they're being sent to multiple people at once. So think critically about the emailer's voice and message. Do they address you oddly? What are they asking for? Investigate details, starting with the email address. Does the address match the one that you would normally associate with that entity? Also, hover your cursor over any links to see where they go. Oftentimes, attackers will disguise their URLs, so read the address carefully. If you receive an email that you think might be phishing, please report it to your IT department. Once you do, we'll take every step necessary to make sure the phishing email doesn't spread to your university colleagues. In most cases, an attacker will send phishing emails to dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of people at a time. Some attackers, however, take a more sophisticated approach. They choose a specific target, then learn about and impersonate someone who the target trusts. This makes the attacker almost unnoticeable until it's too late. We call this technique spear phishing, and it's among the greatest dangers to information security today. You see, part of the danger lies in how real a spear phishing impersonation will appear. The attacker will present a false identity, crafted from public information, social media, and scraped emails. In addition, while basic phishing emails are sketchy from the start, a spear phisher works by gaining your trust, then springing the trap gradually, almost imperceptibly. By the time theft or malware get involved, it's almost too late to escape. Imagine that on a normal day, you receive an unexpected email from your boss's boss. And they're asking you for a favor, so naturally, you agree. In the conversation that follows, you might chat for hours, days, weeks, or months, not realizing you're communicating with an attacker. With your unwitting help, they can get access to vital networks, databases, and accounts, then vanish without a trace, leaving behind untold damage to the university. All right, enough negativity. Let's talk about how to win. When it comes to spear phishing, most tips and tricks will fall short of catching an attack. So to be secure, rely instead on this one rule. 
the instant something even remotely out of the ordinary comes your way, contact the sender directly using a different channel of communication. If it's a message from the bank, go online and check your account manually. If it's a request from a vendor, make a phone call. If it looks and sounds just like someone you know, but they're asking for something that could be sensitive, get your steps in and go talk to the person in person. The extra effort it takes to double-check unexpected messages may turn out to be the barrier between an attacker and the information and money that they're trying to steal. So step on down to the dealership for a new Luxemobile. Shiny chrome exterior, luxurious leather seats, and to ice the cake, you can unlock and start the car with a toothpick. Obviously, we would never be so cavalier with the key to something so valuable. But in the same breath, we often leave our most important and sensitive accounts locked behind vulnerable passwords. Modern cybercriminals have the tools to snatch, reach, guess, or decrypt most decent passwords. This means that the old standards are no longer enough. It's time to rethink our keys. Step 1. Use a real password. No more of this, that, or any of these. And really, don't put private information in a private key. Second, use a long password. Anything under 8 characters can be decrypted in an hour or less with a decent computer. But after 16 to 20 characters, a password becomes nearly uncrackable. The simplest path to a long password is to take a memorable phrase like and condense it to a single strand of words. Now make it a little weird. And spell something, switch out a character, tack on extra letters, or capitalize the wrong ones. Now make a different password for every account you work with. The hacker who nabs the key to your cooking newsletter shouldn't get access to your bank as well. And finally, don't reach for the sticky notes. Yes, you do have a lot of long, weird, unique passwords to remember, but if you put them where anyone can steal them, well... Instead, store everything in a password manager. Password managers keep all your credentials encrypted and hidden, locked behind a single master password. You can retrieve your credentials when you need them, without letting an attacker see. So to sum up, create a long unique passphrase for every account, and then store each one in a password manager. <laughs>